All right, Robbie. So our guest today, and he's all the way over in Europe. Uh, his name is Christian Brickeye, and I know that I'm not saying it correctly. So give the correct pronunciation of your last name. Hello, <laughs> my name is <laughs> my name is Christian uh, Brickeye, but I know it's hard to pronounce. So you're all good. Yeah. Um, so the way that we became aware of you, and you, you've been in running for a while, but uh, I, the Near Earth socks that came out recently. Um, and you know, we get tons of product and we slip it on. And a lot of times, especially with something like a sock, it's not like a big deal, um, piece of your garment off the bat, but when they're right, they're really right. And your shoes came out or your socks came out. And I was like immediately like a fan of the, of the products. And I was talking to uh, somebody else who happened to know you as well here in the States. And, um, so, oh, he's an interesting guy. You should get him on the podcast. Who so was it? Here we are. Um, it was, um, damn, you oh, get, get in my, <laughs> on my phone. You know, um, we'll cut this part out, but uh, what's his name? Um, he does all the rep for Morton. Russell. Russell. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Russell um, was the, uh, the co-conspirator. So then we started talking. But anyway, so back to this. So we're kind of curious because we've seen some other brands start off with socks and and you know, in that general area and then expand out into full lines. I'm thinking of like clothing brands like Bandit, who, you know, for the longest time it was a pair of white socks and now there's a whole apparel line. So we're kind of curious, like, where's Near Earth going? Well, first of all, you can, I'm, I feel like I'm still at the beginning of everything because I'm so happy when I hear something like that. Like if, you know, you sit there by yourself and you dealing with a factory and you're like drawing and making up things and you wanted to produce it that way. And, um, someone told me that, you know, clothing or, um, that category is basically just the end result of a lot of failures that other people don't see. <laughs> so, um, I feel like, yeah, I'm, uh, it's, it's, I'm happy the way it came out and it took a lot of time and money on those sampling machines. Um, and for now I want to build a line, um, of socks for runners. And that's really the, the main goal. Like I want to, I want near earth to be a running brand and, you know, not, I, that's, that's how I started. I looked at socks. I wanted to find a good socks, my sock myself. And then, um, you can buy them as an accessory or from a sock company and they have all the joggers because they want to sell to everyone and you know they don't or they make up un, you know make up features out of thin air that don't do anything for you so i didn't want to do anything of that i just want a simple sock that works for you so what what in, in making a sock for runners what was the thing that you thought was missing from other socks that you you were like our ours is going to be better we're going to do this and make it yeah, or was it that you had a favorite sock and they were hard to get a hold of? So uh, you were like, "I'm just gonna make my own." But be, before we get into that, like, um, you you started this during COVID, correct? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, um, I had a photo shoot and ran the LA Marathon, and then there was a week until the Speed Project. And I was like, "Do I stick around because the other job has a travel budget, or do I go home?" And then. I think I flew home on like after the, the LA marathon and then arrived at home and then was like worldwide, uh, the WHO declared worldwide pandemic. And, <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, okay, I guess I'm here now. And it, like I, my calendar was empty. I had nothing to do. And I had this idea where I always liked the small brands in sports because their creative is different, their approach is different, their marketing is different. And um, so I had a whole list of things I wanted to do. And, you know, it was the pandemic. People were like, let's learn guitar. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know, finally start one thing. And then I nailed it down to, uh, to the socks. And um, I started out with the Italian factory. And the, the area where they make all the shoes and all the garments is... Uh, pretty affected or was pretty affected by by COVID. And so they were all at home and they were kind of happy to take on a new client. And I think I wouldn't have gotten in there if it wasn't for the slowdown they had on their end too. 
Oh, wow. So that was the space that we were at visiting Diodora, correct? Is that the same I, town? I'm not 100% uh, sure where you visited, but maybe. We were in Serrano di San Marco, but that's a little bit. It's like so an hour outside of Venice, but I'm not sure if it's the same area though. Yeah, in a way, I think it's all from like the southern tip of Lake Garda to uh, Milano. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the, they built the shoes for the Napoleon uh, army there. So that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> that he didn't have good socks though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so to get back to Robbie's question, Robbie, you were asking about uh, why. Socks, right? Yeah. What was what was the what did you find that was missing or that you needed in your own sock? Or you thought runners need it? I felt like there's a little bit of a gap. Um, like there are simple socks that are pretty good, and then whenever there's a, a a designated sock company, do you feel like oh we have to make them knee high and sell them for fifty sixty dollars uh, and I'm not a big believer in those socks. I don't see it at the elite fields um, very much at least. Um, and I think I personally wouldn't buy a pair of socks for $60. So I thought, mm -hmm. let's find something. Uh, what's the, what are the, like, I don't have a single USP. It's a running sock. And I looked at the foot and I looked at the shoe and the shoes when I, I mean, the time when I started in the pandemic, we had a couple of years where Nike dominated the carbon plate shoes. And then we had new shoes and I, and I discovered as a photographer, people are not loyal to a brand. They use whatever works for them best. And if you have a ASICS shoe for racing or the new balance, and then a sock worked for you that had a Nike swoosh on it or Adidas stripes, then you had this co branded problem, or I don't know what the word is. Double I don't like mixing the brands either. Like, I think what you're getting at is that you want, like, I, I, I do love, and I think that some of the companies right now are making a mistake of getting into, I mean, they're not making a mistake. There's probably for their bottom line, it's great, but getting into shoes. But the whole thing, the reason I like them as a boutique company was that I could wear any shoe that we have and the clothing and, and the apparel was agnostic. They, it wasn't, you, you didn't have to like have, Adidas head to toe. You could do like a nearer sock with, you know, miler uh, shorts and, and top. And it didn't all have to, it didn't matter if you switched out your shoes the next day. Yeah. So, and I mean, that's like a minor thought in that because it, it, then I discovered like, yeah, okay, I think there's a real running brand missing in that space. And so the idea was what do those performance shoes look like? They have, usually one piece upwards that are very snug. And if I looked at other socks, they had all these features and bumps and text written on it. And I was like, if that's all pressure uh, pressing on my foot when I'm running and you have, I don't know how many steps you do in a marathon, 35,000, maybe that's, can, that can't be very good. So how simple can it be and what does it take? And I think uh, material is a big big one and construction is a big one. And then, you know, basically my design disabilities led to this minimal design and I'm pretty sad <laughs> I landed there because it seems to- I like the, I like the honesty. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, and so your background though, aside from um, prior to near, near Earth, you were a photographer, right? And I, I, I think still are, so. What is that mostly what you've done prior to this? Yeah, exactly. Okay. All I did before, I, I mean, now you're catching me at this point where I'm thinking of how can I make this transition? Because I think near earth is, it's really fun. Um, you connect with people in different ways. Um, I can also connect and, uh, talk to other people in the industry in different ways, other than like, Hey, here's a PDF and images and I'm mm -hmm. a photographer. Um, but yeah, um, I was a photographer and that's how I got into running basically too. Like I was just visually interested in it. And, um, I was a snowboard photographer for 10 years and there's a lot of small brands and there's a lot of sports culture. And I was like, Oh, 
because running in Germany looks a little different than in Australia, UK or the US. Um, yeah. But uh, when I discovered that, and I think I can track it back to, I, I shot running a little bit. And then I met uh, Jesse uh, Zappo and Knox Robinson in New York when they started Black Roses. That was in 2013. And I was like, ah, I know this. And I, I was familiar with the feeling and what they were after. And um, so I was really interested in, in documenting that. And whenever I had a trip coming up, I was like, texted Knox and like, hey, do you do anything on a Thursday? I was like, yeah, I have a good <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's awesome. a trip. So, is the sock project as you're going through? Is this a self-funded product uh, project, or did you have to get investors for it? No, uh, self-funded. Um, so all the all my savings and the, <laughs> and the pandemic didn't really help. Um, went into it because it was a little bit different than I expected it. Um, it's. Uh, you know, if you do, so I started with one product and two colors and four sizes because I wanted the smaller size increments. So they really fit true to size and, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to uh, fulfill certain minimums if you want a certain quality of a, of a yarn because it's a very lightweight yarn and the yarn supplier wants to send, uh, sell a couple kilos. And so it's like everything escalates and escalates. And then you're like, oh. I'm actually ordering now this huge amount. Um, yeah. So, and now I just reordered and um, I'm working on getting a second warehouse so I can, uh, I'm, uh, I can ship from the U S to the U S uh, locally. So oh, nice. it have to be this cross border thing, although it's not a big problem. Like it arrives pretty quickly. There's no customs. It's below that customs threshold. Um, it's all okay. fine, but I think a lot of people are put off by, Oh, international shipping. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of crazy, though. There had to be a moment where you're putting your money out there on the line and investing in this thing. And socks, it's like, uh, I do think there's a lot of people who probably don't put that much thought into their socks. Like, even we know people will see, I'll go out for a group run, and there'll be people that are buying, you know, cotton socks, basically, from, you know, the DSW or whatever the I, discount place is. That has to be the majority of people. You think so? Yeah, I mean, before, I, when I was first starting running... I definitely only wore cotton socks. I had no clue. Um, I mean, it's the thing is too, it's like, and I get it to some degree because if you're changing socks every every day, maybe twice a day for both lifestyle and running, you're going through, what, 14 pairs of socks a week sometimes. I mean, laundry is the biggest problem yeah. that runs out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so how did you educate or how do you get people like obviously you're buying, like you said, you have to buy bigger numbers and you're, and you're trying to do this internationally and, and grow an audience. And I hadn't really heard of uh, Near Earth, I would say until you sent some socks a little while ago, which was probably less than six months ago. But since then I've seen, uh, you know, different people, you've obviously gotten them into the hands of uh, different Instagram influencers and stuff like that, that I'm starting to see more noise about it. But how do you convince people to that there's a difference in socks and one, there's a difference even in performance socks to where you feel like you've, you're putting out a product that's a little better than what else is out there. Well, to the first point you were making, it was a crazy feeling and that's what I mean. Like I'm still super stoked when I hear people are liking the product and um, it's a huge motivation. Like every time I get Instagram DM or something and someone likes it or um, I'll, I'm happy to go back to work and, uh, and, and work on it and ship everything as quickly as possible and like do all the work. And, um, I mean, convincing, right. It's, you feel your shoe a little bit different in good socks. And I think everyone who p starts paying attention a little bit, maybe has a sock draw and then the favorite sock goes to the side. So you save it for the <laughs> long run. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, at least that was the case for me. So I was like, I was going through a couple of different socks um, during my first marathon build up, and then I found a pair, and then I saved it for race day. And it, you know, it, it, and I like that approach. It can be quiet. The, the 
sock doesn't have a design that is screaming or doesn't want anything from you. I just want it to be a peace of mind product and you know, that's it. Yeah. I actually wore the socks for the Boston marathon. Uh, yeah, it, it, I, one, I, I like the style. I, I prefer now when I first started running, I kind of liked the no show sock, but as I've been running more and we test a lot of different shoes having, uh, I guess it's, it's not, is it a crew? Would you consider it a crew sock? Yeah, height, the one that. I mean, I'm calling it a crew height. I don't know. Americans have different names. I sent you the. I think the sometimes three. they. Um, I think sometimes they call it a three quarter. I think your height is more of a mini crew. Seems to be. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, but well, the reason I like that is when we're testing different shoes, you can get different reactions to the heel counters and the and the collar on the shoe. So I like it to cover the ankle. Um, a little bit. It always helps. And every time Megan gets a blister, I'm like, were you wearing a sock that was higher than the top of the shoe? <laughs> and often she wasn't. But um, so the fit is right. The sock is right. And you just sent us a new model. So more of a racing uh, version. This is going to be a thinner, which I would compare to maybe, um, I know Adidas makes a racing sock and Nike makes a racing sock. It's It's a little more on that line where you're going to want your shoe to fit a little more snug because there's not much in between the sock and, and the inside of the shoe. Like, do you see like a whole line coming out and this is just the first two? Like how, where do you see this evolving to? Like I said, I, uh, I think for a running sock brand, you want to serve the whole spectrum. And I think, um, I mean, for me, what can I do? Like if I go, to to the entry level there's so much competition and with my the smaller quantities it's really hard to compete there and i need to compromise a lot what i want from it so um actually like taking the knowledge now and going back to that sampling machine um because that's kind of how i'm made that sock we were i was sitting at that machine i was like can we make the compression here different and how can we have more stretch for the toes so they can open up when landing and how can like do we need to add structure to back to the heel so it keeps in place and uh, so it's super interesting and it, probably super annoying to the to the guy on the sampling machine <laughs> to like pump out one sock after another but i'm running around at the factory in my in my racing shoes and I'm trying different socks. And then if I have something that's good enough, I give it to people to try it. And I just felt like, um, the distance sock, you know, works for workouts and longer runs and people love it for, for racing. But if you are a type of person that puts on half tights and sorry, I thought I muted everything here. Sorry. Um, if you're a person who, who races in half tights and the singlet and everything is sharp and go time, then, you know, maybe you want that open structured, breathable sock that is, you know, tight fitting. And, um, you know, I came up with this, uh, basically localized compression that really keeps it in place. Nice. I'm kind of curious about your relationship to running because obviously you know you're not going to go and devote yourself to making a running sock if you're not interested in the sport itself and i know you took uh photos but like yourself as a runner uh can you give us a little bit of your background when you started running like what what's what's your passion about why are you so passionate about running um i think i have to go back a little bit to the time when i was a snowboard photographer um because i was i had a pretty active life I think, you know, I traveled 180, 200 days a year and oh, wow. at least a hundred days on a mountain, no problem. Um, and I just had to keep up with athletes while I was hiking with uh, photo gear. And so I was jogging basically without any clue, nothing. And, um, <laughs> I had a couple injuries from that snowboard time. Um, and. I had two surgeries where the surgeon made the same bad joke. I was like, yeah, it was a little worse than on the MRI, but you know, you're not going to run a marathon anyways, are you? And like, oh, <laughs> I have to, can't put weight on my, on my foot for 10 weeks. I can't carry around a glass of water in my apartment. Oh, geez. It's 
a horrible idea. I will not run a marathon. And then so that thought stuck with me. But when I felt like, hmm, I actually kind of like this feeling of rehab and everything is fixed, maybe I should use it for what it's meant to use. And I, st- and I got back into running a little bit. And um, so I, and that was the time when I met people like Blue Benedum, uh, Coach Blue, uh, and he's, he's big into mechanics and running as a skill. And I was like, ah, actually it's, you know, you shouldn't play tennis and go to the tennis court and hammer the hammer for one hour. There is a warm up period and you can treat it as a sport. And, um, so that was a, was a changing moment for me. It was like, ah, actually that is a sport and I should treat it as one. And then, you know, that there's this feeling when you do something and you, you were told you shouldn't do it or, you know, you were, didn't expect yourself to be able to run that long for and so fast. And I'm that feeling is really doing it for me. I don't have a rock bottom drug story for you, but <laughs> I just like it. We can make one up. Yeah. yeah. But did you run? Did you run when you were younger? Or was this another thing where you started after kind of the, those injuries and in your snowboarding or your photography career in that in, in that space? Yeah, I was jogging without a clue, basically. Like, okay, uh, re- don't record, didn't record anything. <laughs> I feel you. Uh, you know, you start running like a kid on a soccer pitch, and then you're like, oh, I can't even run five miles. And you're like, yeah, that's way too fast. <laughs> or a half mile I, for some of us. That's my favorite <laughs> when you go to a 5K and the little kids take off yeah. for that first 50 feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, you got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So, you, I mean, are you getting, like, who do you reach out? Because this is all new to you. Obviously, you weren't in manufacturing, you're not in clothing, you're not, you're not coming from a clothing brand and building, you know, it's not, we, we talked to a lot of people when they're starting off like this, they were a designer someplace else, decided they wanted to do it for themselves. You're kind of like starting from scratch. You weren't a sock maker. You weren't working for a company that was a sock maker. Who do you go to for um, advice and how are you navigating this space that you really don't, you're kind of a foreigner in? Yeah, that's a very good question. I I mean, creating that sock wasn't the hardest thing for sure. I mean, uh, the I knew what I liked. I could pull references um, and you get physical samples and that helps a lot. Um, I think the first version I had seven or eight samples that I sent to test to a test group, basically. I had, I mean, it was the pandemic. People were running a lot. There were a lot of people in my Strava that ran 100 miles a week. And so I gave those socks to them. And then four weeks later, we gave that feedback to the factory. And it's a really, really good factory. So they could take that feedback and make those changes. Okay. So what kind of feedback are you getting? Like the sock is slipping down in the back or I'm getting it bunching near the toes. Like what, what, what type of feedback? Um, I think in the beginning it was more like construction where, where it's too tight, where it needs more stretch or if it's too closed, it's too warm. Um, and I experimented with this uh, left and right footbed. So the sock doesn't have an L and an R and a crooked toe box. It has a full footbed for left and right. And just to get that right, um, took a couple of steps and, you know, these kind of things. It was just adjustments and I... I made a new version now and there's a, a small adjustment there where um, there's wrapping as, uh, around, the, basically there's a protection under the foot and it wraps to the side of the toes to give you a little bit of a protection when you wear a tight fitting shoe, like one of like those super shoes. And um, if you do the toe linking, there's a lot of material and I needed to find a way to have a very flush sitting toe linking while having that protection and it's things like that where you actually need to work on that machine and get prototypes or samples and then get those approved so so do you have a mentor in the apparel business or is there somebody that you go to to kind of like help you as you're trying to find distribution and and all of the things that go along with building a a apparel brand um i mean i I'm really surprised, positively surprised how much help you get if you just ask, um, mm. you, know, I, you know, even, you know, randomly like Nick from Norda, I got on the phone with him and 
he gave me really good advice um, because they started out with one product too and um, a lot of things. And then I had a store here in Munich, uh, unfortunately closed down just recently, um, but he had a background in clothing and, um, you know, has a passport full of Chinese uh, immigration stamps and he has a lot of experience working and developing. Um, so I got a lot of help. So f from the athletes to wherever I was asking for help, I got a lot of help and that's, you know, running is super awesome. The people are in running are great. Mm -hmm. I, that's one of the things why I'm, you said, why, what's so interesting about running. And I think it's really good people. <laughs> I think it's the endorphins, but um, <laughs> the uh, it's crazy because Nick seems to be a common thread that's weaving in and out of all these smaller brands that we talk to. Uh, obviously, we love the Norda product, love the mission behind it. Um, is is there going to be a Norda? Because he loves collabs. Is there going to be a Norda um, near Earth uh, mm -hmm. sock collab? <laughs> I think it would be very fitting. <laughs> <laughs> it should happen. It takes time to to develop. Um, and I don't know how much I can say publicly, but um, we try it a little bit, um, what it could look like. And uh, But there's nothing in production now. Yeah. yeah. So which is your favorite between the 001, 002, and the 003? Well... I have a couple oh ones here, um, and I like them a lot. I run them here uh, when I go trail running. Um, I would like to, to try the the flatter ones too, um, but the oh two, the yeah. But for now, mm -hmm. you know, for I don't when I go trail running. There's a, I put it on Strava because there's a lot of hiking in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I th you know when it comes to trail running, I. I feel like the range of pace can be so broad. Nobody cares what the pace is. They're yeah. more interested in seeing like the terrain and elevation. That's why trail running is awesome because you can walk. <laughs> <laughs> trail walking. But um, it is, I mean, honestly, like when people look at the Strava, I, when it's someone's trail running, I don't look at their pace. I look at the elevation and the elevation lets me know mm -hmm. if their pace was good or not. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh -huh. but I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's just... Someone turned on the the light switch here. We had horrible weather, and now uh, snow is melting, and we're getting good weather. I can't wait to go. Oh, wow. There. How far is Munich from where we were in um, Herzo and, and um, Nuremberg? Um, I think Herzog and Aurach is maybe one and a half, two hours, and Venice, Italy is like four or five hours. So we're a little wow. bit between. Wow, okay. Yeah, it, when we were there, it actually snowed in Herzo one day, and then it was like seventy degrees the next day. Yeah, so it was it was pretty wild. Yeah, but wild so, do you have any uh, regular running, like uh, road running races, or anything coming up soon? Um, I'm actually recovering a little bit from. Uh, I had a meniscus tear, and mm. it's I had couple of surgeries on that knee so it's degenerated quite a bit so i have to take it super slow mm. and um yeah i i'm i'm i need to make up my mind i think do i if i want to run a marathon i still think want to chase a time goal and if you run fast it's a lot of pounding and if i run slow it's a lot of time on your feet so <laughs> <laughs> you're losing no matter what <laughs> what am i doing to to not risk any overuse um, and for now i'm i'm super happy like uh the weather's fine i can go cruise for two hours um and you know i'm i'm, I'm fine like that but i did a little bit of a uh did a two-hour run and did 10 k's at my older half marathon pace and then you know i was on the couch for two mm -hmm. days so i think i still take in pain oh jeez well have you run uh, berlin i would think that's the biggest marathon in germany right yeah yeah i ran berlin twice it's pretty good um and yeah it's uh any tips any <laughs> tips yeah for running berlin for anyone who will be running it this fall <laughs> mm, i i'm i think they don't do the best or uh with the, the corrals it's a little chaotic um so take your time to settle into the race. Um, 
don't try to overtake people and the because it, it there's a lot of turns in the beginning um and then it's you know there's nothing really you have to take care of there's a blue line it's flat um mm -hmm. the, the energy is great for germany um we're not very <laughs> <out of laughs> um yeah. the german excitement is not that great um but yeah berlin is pretty good and um and then the finish you know don't underestimate it's a 400 meters from the brandenburg uh, gate, gate. To the line yeah and that can be see that i'm glad i watched that on the tv <laughs> this year because i really thought the brandenburg gate was the finish line Mm -hmm. And if I hadn't watched that, that would have really sucked right. to like do that sprint to the Brandenburg Gate yeah. and then have another half mile to go or a quarter mile to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a funny finish because you, there's all these cheer zones and they kind of carry you and it's like, oh, it must be around that corner and then that corner and then there it is. And yeah, don't start sprinting <laughs> too soon. That's awesome. That's good to know. And then is... Is Oktoberfest actually as awesome as they make it out to be, or is it overrated? I need to know. Um, you should go with me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right. We need an insider insider info, yeah, some, insider tour guide. Uh, I know some of us will be there for this fall's Berlin, uh, so we're pretty psyched. And uh, I, I think one of my friends is going there for his bachelor party. <laughs> uh, afterwards for Oktoberfest. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, who, oh. the, the one with the plane. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it should yeah, be good. A couple of people from LA, from Good Vibes um, Track Club, um, who came down to Munich and don't make the mistake of, I'll just go there for a day and then go back to Berlin and catch the flight. And it's just, you know, it's a long train mm -hmm. ride. It's super hectic. And, you know, you, Munich is worth a visit. And, um, you know, and they also made the mistake like I had to take the uh, get them out of the Hofbräu house tent because that's where all the Americans go. <laughs> and then I took uh -huh. them to a couple more, you know, what's it not more authentic about real and more authentic, but less touristy. Everyone is welcome. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what I need to know. Yeah. That's the good stuff. All right. Is there anything else we want to cover? Um, well, I just wanted to ask you of the places you've been and traveled, what's your favorite place, maybe either for running or even that you've done with photography? Hmm. I mean, I really like the adventures that I could go on just by, you know, being a photographer. Um, I've done a couple different things. I ran around the... United Nations compound in Mali. Um, there's a funny, uh, I don't know, I maybe put it, I have put it on Strava when I got back because I couldn't <laughs> use anything. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't, I mean, you know, if you're visiting, Munich is pretty good for running. Um, it's, hmm. uh, you get outside your door and you're usually very quick at the river and there's no street lights and you can just go and cruise forever and, um, and then mm. come back to the city or go to the park that's that's in the city here. So, yeah. I, nice. I'll do so a Munich's on the list. Tour. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds almost as cool as Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. You got to <laughs> check out Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. Have, have you had any experience with Baltimore other than like the wire? <laughs> oh, I don't even have the wire experience. No, um, nothing. Only that I uh, printed out FedEx label for you guys. There we go. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that works. All right. Well, we love the socks and uh, have been using them uh, quite. And like when you said putting a pair off to the side, typically at this point, I'm taking my near earths and, and sliding them into my, uh, my fun runs. Like if I have a workout or a long run, yeah, I just like the way they, they fit and I like the height and uh, I look forward to seeing more product and I'm excited to see this grow. And it's like nice that we get to talk to you now when you're you're just starting off and just growing and then we'll we'll probably follow up in a year or two and see see where the brand's growing but excited to see where you're going to take this this uh this brand yeah definitely yeah thank you i'm that's uh, i'm i'm working on it it's uh every day you're doing a little bit of product development a little bit of marketing a little bit of sales and um 
yeah so let's see if that's growth or if i need that investment you you said in the beginning um to to get beyond that threshold um but it's definitely rewarding and i wouldn't be able to do it if i hadn't had you know the people in running to help out and even for you you have the biggest review platform and you you know bring in the smallest running brand on the planet. Uh, <laughs> well, we're all looking for the same stuff, a better experience when you're running. So yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's coming from mm -hmm. a major, huge company or, you know, somebody who says, Hey, I think I got a better, better mousetrap. Hmm. That's true. Definitely. All right. Thanks, man. Th thanks Christian for coming on. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks very much. Oh, 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 oh,